Just for a quick note, I do apologize if I sound weird, I have a pretty nasty chest infection, but yep, still need to make content, so let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges, my name is Nathan, and we're going to do something a little bit different. We've really not been speaking about Total War in a while, which, yeah, that needs to change, but we need to talk about Total War Pharaoh. You see, the High Tide updates came out just a few days ago. And I feel like that's quite important to talk about because it doesn't just affect the future of Total War Pharaoh, but I feel like it's going to be quite important for discussions about Total War in general, including Warhammer 3. So the High Tide update is a rather large patch for Total War Pharaoh, fixing a bunch of issues alongside a DLC given out for free. The Sea Peoples, something that would have been a paid DLC originally, was turned into a free content release, so if you own Pharaoh, you will get them naturally. And the Sea Peoples can be quite fun, focusing on a little bit of Horde factions, but you can actually settle. So comparable, you could play these very similar to the Vampire Coast, where your characters would be pseudo-hordes and you would build up an empire too. They've naturally got their own unique mechanics also, which... Again, anything usually made by CA Sophia is a good thing, as we're all fully aware that CA Sophia is able to make the best with what they have. It's very obvious when you look at the really unique mechanics that were introduced in Total War Saga Troy, which has slowly been bleeding into Warhammer 3. It's a good thing, honestly. Now, Pharaoh's obviously been struggling for a while. Pretty much since launch, it's been a downward spiral, and... Before this patch dropped, it was mostly peaking at around 800, and that's on a good day at least. The patch has been out for a few days now, and it's been peaking around 1,300, which, for a game that is not really going to have much of a lifespan post this, yeah, it's not too bad, I guess. Before you get mad, look, it's, it's very obvious that this game is going to get a few more bits of content, and then it's pretty much done. I believe that was also stated in one of their press releases. They do have time to kind of revive it, but I very much doubt that something like High Tides is going to bring the revival that this really needs to keep on supporting the title. But we have to be very much aware that when a title doesn't perform, it's going to be axed. This is something that we've seen with a lot of different games in the Total War sphere. Total War Free Kingdoms, despite still being relatively popular, it's peaking at around 8,000 players, and rightly so, because it's a tremendously good game. But yeah, that got axed. Thrones of Britannia didn't get DLC as far as I'm aware. Troy's lifespan was cut a little bit short in favor of making Pharaoh. So yeah, what I imagine that we'll get for Pharaoh in the future is the combined map, which we already know is coming. In fact, I do believe that there was a data mine map at some point, which basically showed the true extents to the map of Pharaoh. And alongside that, I very much expect a Mythos DLC. Yeah, it's going to happen because if they're going to combine it with Troy, they're going to need to sell something alongside it to actually make the games fully compatible. That would be a Mythos DLC, because I very much doubt that they're going to do a Truth Behind the Myth situation. So what do I expect to happen to CA Sophia after all is said and done? If the game does not actually get the revival people are kind of hoping for in CA? Well, I imagine that a part of CA Sophia will start working on the next title, uh, really, they should be working on a full-scale title because they are really good at what they do, let's be honest there. And I imagine that another part, if they haven't already, have been sent to Warhammer 3 to kind of help fix up for that shit show, right? That's the big moneymaker, so they really need Warhammer 3 to kind of get back up to speed. I do feel like there's a little bit at fault here with CA, though. If you look at the player numbers, it's not great, and it kind of feels like CA kind of did this to themselves. There was little to no marketing for the update for Pharaoh. Sure, it's not a paid update, but you'd imagine that they would have pushed it a little bit further to kind of say, hey, look, this game is here. It's cheaper now, there's free content, all the usual stuff. Because let's be honest, again, they dropped the prices not because they wanted to, but because they really had to. Now, they did offer creators early access to it, which I think was an embargo for the day before. I did not apply for it, mostly because, well, Pharaoh's not something that I generally cover, right? Something like that would have been totally wasted on me where it could have gone to someone else, but yeah, it does seem that not a lot of people covered it anyway, which is uh, curious to say the least. The lack of marketing for Pharaoh, which is supposedly a title that they do believe in, worries me a little bit for Warhammer 3. 4.2, I imagine, is right around the corner, and that needs to be really, really polished. It's something that does genuinely concern me, because, yeah, you know, no marketing for Pharaoh, which has been odd. 
it makes me think, oh, are we going to get a patch that is just not ready yet or something? And yes, I'm fully aware that these are two completely different studios, but they come from the same head, and the head seems to be making a lot of stupid decisions lately. A full marketing cycle for 4.2 needs to be done in a very similar way to that of a DLC launch, I imagine. They need to really get people up and running. Thankfully, Warhammer Free's player numbers are actually quite good, and this is due to the fact that it's Warhammer, right? It's not because it's a Total War game, it's because it's a Warhammer game, which many people have been hoping for for many years. This is why the average player numbers is usually around 20,000, sometimes more. On the weekends, obviously, it spikes up quite heavily. But a big push needs to be done. I imagine that if they're going to be giving the content that many of us are expecting for this DLC in the terms of additions, they're going to have to treat this like if it was a fresh new release. This would be to generate the sales that they lost because the original release was... Um, yeah, you know. But also to win favor back to the community. Showing that you care about the product is also a good indicator to the fan base that stuff is going to get supported. I imagine it's going to be a weird time for CA in general, not just for Sophia, but also CA proper, for a good few months until everything kind of gets back up to speed. But they really need to start upping up their marketing, especially for Warhammer 3. A failed launch for Warhammer 3 will be... well cataclysmic for CA in general. They definitely can't afford another failed push unless they want another round of uh, firings, which there have been rumors that there have been a few more coming out as January began. Those rumors themselves are very concrete, but yeah, it's kind of expected that there's still going to be a massive shakeup at CA, considering how well everything is going. It's just absolutely bizarre. But yeah, I guess time will tell. It's just after seeing the lack of marketing for Pharaoh, it's kind of gotten me worried for Warhammer 3. And those are genuine concerns, you know? At the end of the day, I am a Warhammer channel after all. I've also been following uh, CA for quite some time at this point. It's just very odd to see something kind of being done halfway, right? Hopefully I'm proven wrong, and I would hope so, but it's just one of these things, and I do want to discuss it with you guys. But yeah... Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. I wanted to talk about this with a level head rather than going full Duma, uh, because a lot of people did. They're already killing off Pharaoh. I, I still think it's got a chance. I honestly still think it's got a chance. But yeah, time will tell. And uh, yeah, I do apologize if I sound really odd, like I said at the beginning of the video. I'm just not feeling great. I'm really trying to get back into the spring of things in terms of content. But, uh, yeah, it's not fun. This this video has actually taken me around four or five hours just to record eight minutes of audio footage. So, yeah, that's awesome. Ah, God, you got to love the beginning of a year when a fresh new set of plagues comes into effect. Well, it's kind of topical, right? Because after Shadows of Change, we should be moving on to the Nurgle DLC whenever that comes up. God, I hope it's soon. I want to see Tamakon. But, yeah, have a good day, guys. I'll see you all again very, very soon.